Which drugs should be legal and which ones should stay banned? And 20 years ago, a legend was born. Welcome to Purgatory. What's going on, Freaks and Freakettes? I'm Spike. And I'm Matt. Thanks so much for tuning in again. Make sure to check us out on all major podcast platforms. Subscribe and share our channel to friends and family, people you know would like it. Check out the pledge tiers at anchor.fm. Drop us a voice message on the Anchor app, comment on YouTube, leave a review, email us at official podcast at gmail, official purgatory podcast at gmail. We're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. We're pretty much everywhere at this point, right, Madman? Oh, yeah. Everywhere. All platforms. Hell yeah, brother. So today, I am excited to talk about some drugs. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I don't really have any stories today, which is, I mean... Could be well, good, could be You know bad. what? I, I got a story today, okay? Oh, yeah? Go so, for it. Man. Quick recap here. Mm -hmm. um, my brother had a car, 2007 Ford Fusion, that he mm -hmm. had parked in the lot. It uh, stopped working. Transmission was fucked. Um, and, like, my brother was like, all right, it's going to be cheaper to buy a new car than this car. So what ended up happening was my parents bought a new car, and then he got their old car. Right. So he didn't, he didn't even have to buy a car. So So... Um, he, he, he wasn't paying for insurance on the Ford Fusion or like, you know, he just kind of had it there because he wasn't using it there. Paperweight. Um, yeah, pretty much. And then so the the city came by and was like, hey, you guys got to get rid of that, you know? Because like, it, what's it called? The, the Neighbors Association? The Homeowners Association. Homeowners Association. And so I was I'm like, guessing. all right. Yeah, something like that. It's like the neighborhood thing. Um, so we said, all right, fine. Let's just get rid of it. Um, Some no soccer mom it. complained is what happened. Yeah, 100%. That bitch. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, like, they're, they're not wrong, you know what I mean? It's kind of just been sitting there. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, so my brother, like, he, he's always had, like, a hard time selling things, just, like, putting it on Craigslist and stuff, whereas me and my dad, like, that's just what we did growing up as a side hustle. Mm -hmm. We, like, always just, like, like, we would go to Home Depot, and, like, they have a clearance section on, like, everything. Yeah, yeah. So, like, pick it up for, like, 20 bucks, sell it for 60 bucks. It's just, like, a nice, like, we, especially, like, in the summer, just make some, like, quick cash. Mm -hmm. Um... So he asked me, he said, all right, put it for $500. If you put it for any more, you can keep the extra. And yeah, I mean, like, that's it. So I was like, hell yeah, like, it's like a challenge. Let's see if I can make 500. He makes 500. Uh, so I put it on there. People were like, you know, they would come in, go out, come in, go out. And then this one guy texted me. And then so we had a good thing going. And then, like, I was like, all right, meet today. And then that day, like, between, like, Five to twenty minutes of meeting him, he'd be like, "All right, man, can't do today. Let's do tomorrow." You know what I mean? Oh, what an asshole! Yeah, he just kept doing this over and over again, and then we finally got him down. Like after three days, he came. He saw the car. He loved it. Um, and then he bought it, right? And then so he had someone tow it, and then so the car's off my property now. It's gone, but then like he's texting me and saying, "Hey, man, uh, this car's actually a four cylinder, not a six cylinder." And I was like, all right. He's like, you told me a six-cylinder. And I'm like, uh, no, no, I never, no, not once did I tell you it was a six-cylinder. And I, even I already... if you did, he saw the car. Oh, yeah, and, and he saw the title and everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, we, you know, like, he, he could have looked it up himself. Um, and uh, so he was texting me, and I'm just like, I, I read back to all of our chat, and, like, not once did I say anything about any kind of cylinders, you know? So, he just um, wants you to give him money back. Yeah, I, I, I think he's trying to, like, knock off another hundred or something like or that. Or his wife um, was like, what'd you buy that piece of shit for? And he's like, ooh, I got to try to find a way to... Uh, just please the wife, yeah. Please the wife, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, if he calls me, he's going to say, hey, man, like, you know what I mean? Like, we already shook hands. But, like, the take me to court, dude. Well, I mean, like, the car's off my lot, you know what I mean? You already took it. You, you towed it, and you... You, uh, you know what I mean? Like, like it's yeah. gone. Like, it, it's not in my possession. I, he signed the lead, the, the title. And, like, it's, yeah. it's literally not even mine anymore. The only um, thing that he could do is be to take you to small claims court. But even that, it's like you got text messages. Like, don't yeah. delete them. So, yeah, yeah, not yeah, exactly. Like, I have everything. Like, we never mention anything about. I mean, not that I get that serious. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I just think he's trying to finagle me for another yeah. hundred. But I think other than that, I, I, I think by now he knows. Yeah. Uh, Tell him. To, yeah. I wouldn't even respond. Yeah. But, yeah, fuck um, that guy. But, yeah, I mean, it, it just sucks because, like, he just kept finagling me. You know what I mean? He was like, all right, I'm going to get it today. And, all right, let me get it tomorrow. 
What I um, do on Craigslist is I've bought um, – mo- the most recent thing I bought on Craigslist was a workout equipment thing. And um, I always – I don't haggle super hard, but I always say, like, if it's 100, I'll be like, will you take 80? Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, I yeah. always ask something. I don't, I'm not a dick. I'm not like, well, it's banged up. I'm going to give you 50 for it. Like, I'm just like, well, hey, will you take 80? If yeah, I can get and, it, and, and that, that's what you do. You know what I mean? That's the whole point of Craigslist is that it's like a garage sale. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You kind of just like, all right, this is what you have a price to ask. This is what I have now. You know what I mean? Can we, can we make this work? Because usually they're just trying to get rid of it. So like whatever I can get, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Um, well, and with cars, like I used to sell cars. Mm-hmm. And uh, the lot that I worked on, the people that owned it and the managers were all from Dallas. And they were like these Dallas car dogs, you know, that are, I've been selling cars since 1982, you know, one of those kind of guys. And yeah. uh, they were tell they would tell these stories about how they would get people. You know, and one of them was they would get in the, like the demo cars, the brand new cars, and they would drive to the mall, right? Yeah. And one of the salespeople would get out and be like, hey, you want to come for a ride in the brand new car? And I don't know, <laughs> mall goers are like, yeah, fuck yeah. And they just get in the car in the, like, the $60,000 top of the line car. Yeah. And they would drive them back to the dealership. And then they're, <laughs> like, they're like, where are we going? And they're like, well, we're going to the dealership. You're going to buy a car. And they're like, well, no, I just wanted to ride in the car. And they'd be like, well, you call a taxi to get back. We're not taking you back. Damn, dude. I'm like, that's fucking kidnapping. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? And then, like, the whole the story of, like, throwing, their, uh, throwing the keys on the roof thing. Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, then the craziest one was there's a thing in car sales called trade shopping where, like, someone will come into your lot and they'll get, be getting their trade appraised and then they'll go on a test drive and they'll be like, hey, I want to just go on the test drive with me and my wife or, or just me. I don't want you in the car. And they're like, well, okay, let me make a copy of your driver's license and your insurance and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So they take my car to a dealership, to another dealership. So like, let's say they're, let's say I work at a Honda dealership and they're test driving a Civic, right? And they drive it into a Hyundai dealership and they're comparing it to an Elantra, like the same compact car, but, but like different, mo- you know how like every every uh, company has like a compact car, a full-size sedan, yeah. you know, they're comparing it to the same car, but like a different uh, make at another dealership. Mm-hmm. And there's, it's called getting trade shopped when, when that happens, when they drive your car to another dealership, they give their information of the trade to that dealership. And that trade is sitting in my lot because they're driving my new car. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when you get trade shopped is when that dealership buys that trade sight unseen. So now that dealership owns that car that's sitting in my lot. Oh, wow. And the person just bought from that dealership. And now my car is over there at that dealership. Because they just drove off the lot in a new car. So now my car is in in that dealership. And that dealership's trade that they just bought is in my lot. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So apparently, we didn't do this, but apparently the way of things back in Dallas, where these guys came from, was they'd be like, yeah, we would rip the valve stems out, and we would cut the brakes, and we would pour oil in the coolant, and we would, <laughs> like, they would the just fuck? fuck this trade up. And I'm like, wow, that's jail time. <laughs> <laughs> I never did that, and that never happened at the lot I was at. But they would just tell stories <laughs> about it. They would just tell like, stories about that, and I was like, "Oh, I need to get out of this profession." <laughs> I, I just heard it. I wasn't there. No, I, nah, uh, I don't yeah, know what I'm talking about. I got out of that profession fast. That's I heard, hilarious. I, yeah, I heard stories about like, yeah, man, you can make fifty percent commission on the profit. And you can rob somebody blind, and they love you for it, and they drive off with a smiling face, and you just made thirty five hundred dollars off them. I'm like, yeah, I can't sleep after I do that. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's not okay. Yeah, but that's uh, that's the life of a car salesman, you know. Yeah, and some of them love it, uh, but there's like a special kind of guy that can do that, you know. Yeah, for sure. I know like a few like people like my age that uh went into like an insurance straight out of high school. And, mm-hmm. like, they just kind of become that kind of persona. You know what I mean? Because, right. um, yeah, I mean, it, it's like a race for everyone in there, right? Yeah, everybody's commission. And I've sold a lot of things. When you're in sales, you kind of move around and you sell this and sell that. And it depends mm-hmm. on who pays you. There's, like, zero loyalty in sales. Yeah, exactly. And, and um, 
it's interesting because like it's if everybody's commission, it's kind of like everyone has their own small business. Mm -hmm. And you're like advertising yourself, like you're building a brand for yourself. You're building customer base with like, here's my card. Make sure you here's here's three cards. I want you to keep one and give two out to be your friends. You know, gotcha. you're building this brand. And then let's say you've got a customer base and you're not working the door as much. You're not working the phones as much. You're going on referral business now. Mm -hmm. And someone else comes up and they say, hey, this is our sales commission uh, structure come work for us and then you're like well that sounds great but now i got to start over yeah now i'm gonna be working the phones and working the door and you know go running up to people as soon as they come in hey how are you what can i help you find blah, 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 you know <laughs> yeah that's the worst the best yeah. thing is when you get a call and you're like they're like hey i was recommended to you by so and so i'm in the market for this and you're like yeah i got you when can you come in you know yeah those are the easiest sales in the world Actually, the best sales, the easiest sale in the world is a salesman. When a salesman comes in, because they know, like they're the sometimes they're, well, they're either the best or the worst. Because sometimes they're the best customers. They just come in, they're like, "Hey, I want that." And what do I do to write it up? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm glad I'm not in sales anymore. It's yeah. fun to like. I recommend that everyone do a stint in sales for like a year, or like a, as a high school job, or like over the summer. Even if you work at like Dick's Sporting Goods, that's some kind of sales. It's customer service of some kind, or waiting tables. That's another way to do it, because you get to talk to a lot of people, sharpen your uh, skills of just communication. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely learn. It teaches you a lot of skills. But uh, yeah, man, you ready for this topic? You ready for this? Yeah, yeah for this? hit me, dude. Hit me. What it is? So um, a lot of people feel like marijuana should be legal. Um, a lot of people feel like all drugs should be legal. Uh, I don't think, uh, I feel like all drugs should be legal, but I definitely think that some should be legal and, um, that a lot of the, this, a lot of the drug war money that we're fighting and the, and spending, um, can be completely avoided with some changing in, uh, legislation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I want to discuss is what drugs do you think should be legalized and regulated in some way? Now, I think mm -hmm. we can probably agree that marijuana is probably on that list. Yeah, for sure. And the way I would do it is I'd be like, it's kind of the same as alcohol. Like, you can't drive, operate machinery. You have to be yeah. a certain age. Um, it has to be, it has to pass um, inspections and stuff like that and make sure it's clean. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, man. I, I just feel like it is so not dangerous, especially when you look at other drugs that are legal already. Yeah. It's so ridiculous to me that yeah. it's illegal still. I think I think weed should be legal. That's uh, it's it's more recreational, and I mean, people make like the like the debate that it's like, I guess, healthier than like drinking alcohol. You know, well, um, it's it's not really. I don't think the debate should be about health at all. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, because that, it's that's not why I say like recreational. Right, it's not against the law to be unhealthy. So yeah. I don't I don't think that health should even matter in the conversation at all because like alcohol is definitely not healthy yeah, yeah. And, and, and like it, it comes down to like certain types like i think i think psychedelics should be legal to like a degree like maybe like raising the age up to like when like your like your brain is finished developing because i know like they say like you you shouldn't smoke weed till you're 25 because your brain hasn't finished developing till 25 you know what i mean like your body's still growing but yeah i, I wouldn't mind psychedelics being illegal to some degree what but kind? Anything. I mean, I feel like if it grows out of the ground, like, are you talking mushrooms? Yeah, like, like shrooms, and uh, yeah, pretty much just that. I, like, cause acid and LSD. I, I, just personally, I don't know too much about those. I just grew up more in an area where shrooms were done more regu regularly. Well, so, acid um, and LSD are like designer drugs, mm -hmm. and you can add this or add that or cut it with this and cut it with that, and that's where it becomes dangerous. But. Let's say, let's go down this rabbit hole of like, let's say acid and LSD are made legal, mm -hmm. then the government would regulate it. They would manufacture the drugs at Pfizer, you know, yeah. like lab, clean laboratories with people with white coats on. So you would get cleaner drugs. In theory, you would get safer drugs and you, yeah. could, tax, you could tax them. You, you know, you could, uh, you could regulate the system because right now people are doing the drugs and there's zero regulation. Mm -hmm. So... People are dealing with drug dealers. Drug dealers tend to not just deal drugs. A lot of them deal people. 
a lot of them get into the sex trafficking, mm-hmm. especially when you deal with uh, harder drugs. Yeah. So for me, if in the in this world where we're making everything legal, hypothetically, it would almost make more sense because it would be you would be able to regulate it more. You know. Yeah. Now here's one where a lot of people I say this and people are like, whoa, whoa, is I think that cocaine could be on that short list to be made legal as well because what is Adderall other than cocaine? Uh, I'm not, I'm not too sure about that one, but I, then again, I I've never done cocaine or like I've never like what 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 is it what does it do for I know like I it like energizes you right like you're like all hyped up. You're um, extremely focused. Mm-hmm. Like uh, you laser focus on things. You're very very energetic. You have it, you can. It's not a. It's different from meth, a, a lot different from meth, and that you're still functional. Like someone that's methed out, like it it really messes with the person. But like, you can do cocaine and still be totally functional. But are there any like a uh, long long term effects to it, or you know what I mean? I'm that sure there is, yeah. but there's long term effects to alcohol use. Yeah. Um, but, but I would think like in, in, uh, in a world where like marijuana and shrooms are just legal, um, I would think people wouldn't really drink anymore, to be honest, because a lot of people don't like beer already that I've met. Yeah. But I still think that there'd be a place for alcohol. I mean, yeah, there still would, but I, I don't think it'd be like as popular as it is now. If you're saying that like there's X amount of, uh, recreational or controlled substances that people are going to use mm-hmm. and then you put another controlled substance into the mix it's going to take away from the other one i mean i guess i kind of see that but i don't think it would well, be much market share lost well I, i'm just saying as far as like i mean like if you like smoke weed there's no like you don't feel shitty the next day you know what i mean whereas yeah, like, if, right you, if you drink that. all night or like just like calories wise you know what i mean you drink like five beers and you're like full as fuck you know what i mean whereas like, you mm-hmm. smoke weed and you kind of just chillax um, yeah that's true so it's kind of like, I don't know, zero calorie. You can diet marijuana. Yeah. Well, do, you, do you think there could be some kind of lobbying by the alcohol companies to prevent legalization for that reason? I, I think they could try, but I, I think like the push for marijuana is just way too strong now. That's for damn sure. It's just a matter of time. I don't know why this like holdout states are do, are holding out. I'm like, what the fuck is the point? Well, I mean, you're seeing every couple of months, it's like, okay, like, they're, like, starting to, like, like de- declass it, you know what I mean, and then decriminalize it. So, I, I think we're, there's definitely, like, a momentum going now. So, like, I think, between, like, within now, the next five years, it's going to be, like, more illegal than it is now, you know what I mean? Like, like there's going to be more states for it than there are yeah. now. It, it was a similar kind of thing with gay marriage. In, exactly, in, yeah. Like, like, one state would do it, and then another state would do it, and... And I mean, now you can just drive across a state line, do an illegal thing, and then drive back. Like that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that, that's what's weird to me. It's like uh, we, we, when I played rugby, we would take trips to Colorado. You know what I mean? And yeah. We would go do weed legally. You know what I mean? It's, it's legal here. Yeah. And then you get back to where we're from, and it's like, don't do that. It's like, well, what the fuck? Like, that's so that's shitty. So you know what silly. I mean? Silly. Yeah. It's like so dumb. We come back here and we drink, and then we're just like we can't drive or anything like that you know what i mean we're like we're barely functioning at that point but we were over there we were just you know hanging out we you know smoke some weed and then just lay on the couch you know what i mean and i like we're still like we're still we still know what we're doing you know yeah i i think 100 percent that we should be legal um where you get into the weeds is like well it could make people it has the um the, this effect of making people lazier blah 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 and i'm like well the people that are the people that are going to do it are already doing it. Yeah, for sure. I don't I don't feel like making it legal is going to create this massive influx of people that weren't already doing it recreationally. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I see that argument of, well, you could get a whole bunch of people. Well, like, in the first five years, people would probably go crazy. Mm-hmm. But then it would just be a thing. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're going to have to, like, jump the hurdle first. But, yeah, uh, yeah, like there, there would mean. still be. I mean, you see winos and and drunks and and junkies on the street. You know, mm-hmm. alcohol is already legal. Obviously, we're not talking about heroin. Like yeah. heroin, you're gonna die if you do heroin. It is so addictive. There is literally a demon inside you that says you have to do this drug. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, what like, I, what I think is crazy is like when a state will be like, all right, we're legalizing weed, and there's people still in jail for having weed on them. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's bizarre. That that's what I think is weird. Like, hey man, like uh, maybe let's uh, let's uh, let's review these cases real quick. 
Yeah, well, um, that becomes the the prison industrial complex conspiracy. Are we, are we keeping people inside for a reason or to make money? But the every person that is inside a prison, I read once that the stat is every person inside the prison, it's $40,000 a year on average to keep mm -hmm. them in prison. Taxpayer yeah. money. That's a lot of money. A lot of people don't make that in a year. I was going to say, that's, that's more than I make in a year. Yeah, so that's a lot of, that's a crap load of money. That is enough to support a family. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and if for sure. That, that, much, that much money of taxpayer dollars going towards keeping somebody behind bars that did something that is now, is no longer criminal is ridiculous. Yeah. Just silly. So make the weed legal, regulate it, tax it, make it a thing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and make it a thing nationwide because what I have heard is legalizing it in just certain places has created this like hotbed of cartel activity. Mm -hmm. Like there's more cartel activity in Denver and, and in Colorado now apparently because it's like this safe haven for them to run drugs to, you know? So yeah. as long as they get it to, it's like they can stage drugs there. Uh, well, at least marijuana, now that they've decriminalized mushrooms, like you, they can stage some of these drugs there and not have to worry. They can like warehouse drugs there. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if you just made it legal nationwide, I think it would – people and, and you sold it, like started regulating it, people wouldn't buy from cartels anymore because they could just go like CBD store, you know? Yeah. They could just go and buy dope. Maybe I'm way off on this. I just no, feel yeah. like – I mean I, I see what you mean. Um. I think it's going to be, it's going to, because I know it's going to happen inevitably, inevitably, you know, it's, it's just going to be a thing in the future. Yeah. I just wonder what's going to, what's going to change, you know what I mean? Right. Um, I, I completely agree that it'll like be. The, like the atmosphere will definitely be different um, just because, I mean, everyone loves it, you know what I mean? It, it's not like a left wing or a right wing thing. It's just like a thing people have done for years. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of it's generational. Like the people that are still our um, leaders are, most of them are like baby boomers. Mm -hmm. You look at like Trump is the oldest president we've ever had. Bernie Sanders is like 80. You know, there's <laughs> <laughs> all these people are super. <laughs> no, he is. I don't know. I, why know, I know. I know. Why I just pictured him and I was like, ah. <laughs> with his hair, like. Yeah. Well, with, with, his, with his hands up, you know, he's always like. Ch -ch -ch. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm sorry. Off, off the point. You were saying. You no, know, I just uh, everybody's old, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, even like Generation Z people, people that are like uh, late 40s. Most of them are cool with legalizing dope. You know, it seems like just yeah. the baby boomers are the ones that are holding on to it. And I, I think that this next, like after the Trump presidency, we will likely have a Generation Z president and no longer a baby boomer. You know? Yeah. Um. But what I think is gonna be crazy, like, it, like once America does it, you know, every other country is gonna follow soon. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just gonna be like a what's what's it called? Like the effect? The domino. Domino. Effect. Yeah. Domino well, effect. I, most yeah. most countries already have. I, I mean, I, I I know like there's a lot of countries that like have it like decriminal decriminalized, but I don't know about yeah. it being legal and just sold. Just legal. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, I feel it's like crazy because like because we grow up and we see like bars, you know what I mean? And in cartoons mm -hmm. we see bars. Like in the future it's gonna be like a weed store, you know what I mean? Like, like marijuana or like THC. It's it's just gonna be like I I'm just like still stuck on the fact that like once it happens it's just gonna be strange going to like the plaza and seeing like people smoking weed. Um, I don't see I don't see that at all. I don't, you don't see that'll be strange. I, well, I, I really know. don't. Not not strange in a bad way. Just like it's gonna be like, so, like surreal. You know what I mean? Like oh shit, it's, fine, it's yeah. finally legal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But again, I think it'll be like strange or or different for a couple years, and then it'll just be like that's normal now. We agree on weed. I think it looks sounds like we agree on shrooms. And yeah, uh, let's legalize meth. You know what I'm saying? Um, nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm just playing. Yeah, I think when you have to cook it on a stove, <laughs> that's when it becomes like, nah, we're not doing that. When but like, if you're you meth up, is an meth should. is an upper, meth is an upper, Adderall is an upper, cocaine is an upper. So Ooh. like, if you just legalized one of those harder uppers like that, then you could you could be like, all right, let's legalize cocaine, blah blah blah. And someone's looking for an upper, they could just go do cocaine. Mm -hmm. But again, you can't drive, you can't operate machinery. You know, yeah. you can't well, watch think... a child when you're high. You can't do, you know, there's things that you, you would have to regulate it. And you'd be like, you have to be a certain age. You have to blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, like when you say that, I'm kind of picturing like, this like black mirror universe where like you walk into like a black building, you know, like a very modern building. 
Mm-hmm. And then like there's just like a like a little slit and they like slide you like a little bag of cocaine and then they're just like you must you must do it here, you know what I mean? Like they have like some sort of like den where you do it in and then you have to like you know what I mean? It's kinda like yeah. a like a like a VR room, but it's like you do it here where it's controlled. I don't know. Why not? If it's regulated by the like if there's a, a, a system that regulates it that visits that makes sure no one nothing's happening, you know what I'm saying? Bring it out of the shadows. I believe that sunlight is the best disinfectant. If everybody can see what's going on, everybody knows what's happening, then you can say this is bad, this is good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, that one, I'm not too sure on, just because I, I really just don't know too much about cocaine and, like, the effects on it. Um, but, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, so then I want to touch on this, too. What do you think about prostitution? Like, it's legal in Vegas. I think that's going to, as time goes on, it's going to be a thing, but not with humans, with, like, uh, either VR or, like, sex dolls. Hmm. Um, I'm glad you clarified. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, just because, like, like, like no, like, no joke, I've, I've seen, like, on, like, Vice and, like, on just, like, these, like, modern news outlets that show, like, people are, like, people that are lonely, like, they, they, they obviously want to have that experience, but they, they're still socially awkward, you know what I mean? So they don't want to talk to another human being. So, like, people have created these, like, brothels, which is, like, a VR set. You know what I mean? And, like, the girl, like the girls will just kind of, like, I guess gas you up. You know, they'll be like, oh, like, you're so cute. You know what I mean? So the guys don't have to say anything. You know what I mean? So it's, it's taking that out of them. So I, I don't think it's going to be prostitutes in the future. It's going to be, like, the guy that just owns, like, a building. And you go and put a VR set on and, you know. That the, scares fill in me the more than just prostitution. I, like, I mean, like, like Blade Runner. That yeah. one where he has the virtual wife, you know. That, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. But then again, this is gonna like take away the need for like uh, sex trafficking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I was reading. Um, well, I saw like a you know you log into Yahoo or whatever, and there'll be like the stories on the front page. Yeah. And there was one that was like this 24 year old woman was arrested with this guy, this like 50 something year old guy, and they were both arrested for prostitution. And I'm like, I mean, if this guy is giving her x amount of dollars and they're both of age they're both adults they both know what's happening oh yeah i see what you mean why like, is that illegal if it's consensual well like when you said prostitution to me i imagine like a pimp walk, walking with like five chicks you know what i mean um well, where, where that's bad connotations but it, I, I know what you're saying kind of like a, like, a, like a stripper if she's saying like all right i'm down for, you know what i mean if, if it's consenting I, I guess well like a, from what i understand a lot of the places in vegas it's like you know how a hairstylist or a tattoo artist they will be independent contractors, but they will work at that shop or salon. And mm-hmm. person comes in, they give a tattoo, it's $100. I give 25% to the place for renting their space and their chair, and then I yeah. keep the rest. That's what I understand a lot of it to be in Vegas, is like they work out of these brothels, mm-hmm. or or they work for an agency. And, I mean, you could say the word pimp or whatever, but they work for an agency or they work for a person that controls it, a client calls that person and then they say, Hey, I've got this girl, this girl, or this girl. They charge a fee, and the girl gets a cut, and then the agency gets a cut. You know, but yeah. it's, all, it's all taxed, it's all on the books. Everybody's consenting, everybody's over, everybody's of age, everybody knows what's going on. You know, everybody mm-hmm. can quit. You can, they, like, the girls can walk out and say, I don't want to do this anymore at any time. I'm not sure why that's illegal i mean it's it's legal in europe in some european countries there's red light districts in amsterdam they're they're regulated there's std regular std testing there's the whole nine you know mm-hmm. yeah and, uh, that one's going to be difficult if you want to do like human wise because yeah. uh you know like like a lot of like like um uh i don't i don't just want to label it as feminist but they're gonna say like oh so you're just using her for her body you know what i mean kind of thing she's using her body yeah, I I, she, I, I, I understand that, but like, you know, they, they're just going to fight that side where they're saying like, oh, like, no, like, you know what I mean? Like, like you're, well, you're, you're I could fight her, the exact same side. I could fight the exact same side and say, it's her body. It's mm-hmm. her right to do whatever she wants. Yeah. If that she one, wants, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but like, that, that's what I mean. It's just going to be tricky as fuck. Yeah, it, it's gonna well, be state, but at the end of the day, it just depends on like the lawmakers and whoever passes it or not. Again, though, it's already legal somewhere in our country, and you can go and do something illegal, mm-hmm. and then drive home. <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking sense. It should, like, if we're supposed to be a union, we should have laws that are consistent. 
Yeah. So, that was all I was trying to bring up. I'm not even saying that prostitution should be legal. I'm just saying it's a, it's it, this inconsistency doesn't make any sense to me, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, we're running out of time in the first segment. Uh, let's go into a quick break, and then we'll be back. How's it going, everybody? This is Spike from the Purgatory Podcast. When Matt and I decided to start this podcast, neither one of us knew kind of where to start or how to distribute it to different platforms, and that's when we came across the Anchor app. Now. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast because they give you everything you need in one place for free, which you can use right from your computer or your phone. Different creation tools allow you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds great. And this was the kicker for me. They'll distribute your podcast with no minimum listenership to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and several more. Now, there's really only one more thing left for you to do if you're looking to start a podcast, and that's get out your phone, open your laptop, download the Anchor app, and go to anchor.fm to get started. All right, Madman, welcome back from the break. We have a very interesting segment planned this time. 20 years ago, a star was born. A star? Yeah, dude. A square, you mean? I mean, a, a star square. was also born, but... A square was born. SpongeBob SquarePants celebrating its 20th anniversary today. Yep. Isn't that crazy? That's amazing. It, it really is, man. It, it's so weird, because um, it's, old, it's older than I am, you know what I mean? Um, I guess, I, I mean, I, I turn, or is it? I turn no. 21 on Monday. Yeah, you were. We were just talking about you turning twenty one, and it, now it's just now twenty. So yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I'm older. Okay, okay cool. I was, I was gonna say twenty one um, is more than twenty. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm on one, guys. Sorry. <laughs> um, no, but it just. It's so weird that it, it's. It's. You know, it's still going, right? They're doing still original episodes. Yeah, like I to, really wish to, they weren't tonight. Doing that. Tonight there's a special at seven o'clock. It, it's like his birthday, and uh, I know like David Hasselhoff's gonna be in it and stuff um but oh, yeah, yeah? It's, it's just so crazy like what other kids tv shows have been going on for that long you know what i mean because we have like the anime one piece that's been going on for a while we have the simpsons that's been going on for a while but a cartoon show like aim for kids that's that's just crazy but what's different here is spongebob has definitely lost steam and the simpsons i don't really think has like the simpsons still has a very strong viewership yeah and nobody's really watching the new episodes of SpongeBob. Well, I mean, no one our age, but kids are definitely, definitely watching it. Hmm. I hadn't I mean, really no- noticed oh. as much fandom of SpongeBob anymore. Most kids are are more kids that I see now are more playing video games and not watching TV. Mm-hmm. That's what I notice. You're playing Minecraft and Fortnite and not really watching TV anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean. I- I would think of the, they're making some kind of revenue on it for them to like keep it going. Oh yeah, but I mean, not not very many people are watching TV like we used to. Oh, like, like in general, yeah. It, well, we had a dish, you know. Nobody mm-hmm. has a dish anymore. Everybody's got Hulu, Netflix, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's just a different way of consuming the subject matter. But I've got a, I've got the Nickelodeon dot fandom dot com pulled up, kind of a history of SpongeBob. I thought it'd be interesting to talk about. Oh, hell yeah, boy. So pre-television in the development era was from 93 to 99, and the original name was Sponge Boy. And it didn't make it to the show because the name was already trademarked, um, so they changed it to SpongeBob. And they, yeah, huge change. <laughs> boy Bob, let's go. Yeah. They aired their first episode, which was, it, I think it's the only one that had a three-part um, episode and because there was the help wanted one where he's first getting the job to Krusty Krab, right? Mm-hmm. Then there's the reef blower one where they don't talk at all. It's kind of like Tom and Jerry esque. Like there's mm-hmm. there's just uh, um, music and he's running around with the reef blower, you know. Mm-hmm. And then iconic, the tea at the tree dome one where he visits Sandy. Oh yeah. Yeah, I need it. You know what I'm talking about. Pinky up, SpongeBob. Yeah, yeah. What kind of plants is this? <laughs> like that is just the best, man. That is a great episode. And of course, with that first, of course, with that first episode, everybody was like, 
there's something to this. <laughs> I want. I don't know what this is, but I want more. Of yeah, it. but I want more. And then, uh, so from 2000 to 2004 was like this super peak popularity. Everybody loves SpongeBob. You know, um, merch was everywhere. Action figures, toys, like the whole nine. I don't know if you uh, remember that, but I mean, everybody has SpongeBob shirts. Dude, SpongeBob just, backpacks for school supplies, all the and rings. like, uh, like Happy Meals and like in like the toys for Burger King, SpongeBob, everything, dude. Oh yeah, it was a and craze. It was awesome, and uh, it was just so much fun. And, and like I remember that like everyone's parents hated it, mm-hmm. but dude, everyone loved it. I, I, I was gonna ask you. I was like, how, like, how did your dad feel about it? Because my They're, dad fucking hated that show, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My parents hated it. They were like, his laugh is so annoying and mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, I was like, this, this is my God. Amazing. <laughs> it was yeah. like, so good. Um, And you mentioned this before in that cartoons episode we did, but it's really the origin or the genesis of memes mm-hmm. as they are today because they'll be like, Look at how he dresses, and then it'll show like a like a detailed picture, and then now a lot of those pictures are memes now, and yeah. it'll say like when you see someone walking by, and then it'll show like a SpongeBob clip, you know. And then not to mention the freaking movie, dude. The movie was like so good. Yeah, the, especially the first one, which that one came out. Um, it was allo- announced in late two thousand three. Mm-hmm. 2004, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie earned over 85 million dollars in revenue in the U.S. Yeah, and it was 20 million was that that was on me. 20 million. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) it was announced that SpongeBob SquarePants would be continuing with a new season uh, due in later 2003, and Steven Hillenburg, rest in peace, was rumored to be leaving the show, and he didn't actually leave, but resigned from his position as executive producer. Mm-hmm. And Paul Tibbet stepped in, and um, <laughs> so that's boring as shit. Why am I reading that? I, I, I love how they say stepped in, where he was probably like, "Fuck yeah, dude! I'm about to make some millions. Let's yeah. go." <laughs> yeah, but Steve, it's all—it's all about my main man, Steve. You know what I'm talking oh, yeah. about? Hell yeah, brother! What a guy. R.I.P. Shout out to the boy. Yeah, it's too bad. Too bad. But um, it's too bad. But at least like. He saw like his like that's like that's probably like his biggest dream, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's no doubt. This show got like larger, it became larger than itself. It became this culture. Well, I mean, the fact that it's still like a thing, you know what I mean? Like no one like references like Dexter anymore. Right. That's a hundred percent true. Yeah. And, and like he had games out, he had action figures out. Like this thing was like I had the PlayStation One game. Yeah, me too. Yep. Hell yeah. But uh, so then there's like the post movie era, which is oh five and on. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is like season four. And I think season this is really where it started to decline. Season four still had some decent ones. But I feel like one through three is really just like, Mwah! like uh, they were <laughs> they were just like banger after banger. Yeah, you know? every episode was good. Like, there, like there's like a, a small list of shows that have like these like seasons where like every episode is good. And it was just like. SpongeBob had it. Oh yeah, it's so hard to talk about because I'm just, oh, it's just so good. Like that's like all I'm saying. Yeah, well, it's like you can't. I, I, I mean, hopefully, people that are out there listening are like in like their like our age range. You know what I mean? Twenty to twenty five that are like you know like reminiscing with us. Because mm-hmm. um, that's like when it was good. Um, whereas like I guess if you if you, if you were old, like older, you might hate it. Because my older brother, um, he he liked it, but then he hated it because they just had like the same episodes every day replaying um he hated reruns but i love i'm them. okay like, with was, that man me too I'm, i was like yo my favorite episode again let's go well like i'm I can, i'm the guy that like i can listen to a song that i like on yeah. repeat for like four hours straight like the same song I, i'm not i'm okay with that i'm okay with greatest hits you know what i mean yeah um yeah and like my wife will say that about like I'll watch some of the same shows over and over and she's like you've seen this a hundred times I'm like it's still fucking funny like and now that I've seen it so many times over the years I now can like oh I remember when I was watching it with this person I remember when I referenced this joke at this point you know now there's memories associated with it so it becomes nostalgic you know 
But so then, like season five, season six, they aired them uh, like as marathons, or at least season six. So season six officially premiered with five new eleven-minute episodes airing in a marathon, from July first, oh seven, to the seventh of March, oh eight. It was like a premiere week. So that'd be awesome, Mm -hmm. (laughs) just taking over the whole Nickelodeon network for a week. Um. And it'll have an. They announced that there'd be an additional thirty-nine episodes, um, which included the remaining episodes of season six and season. And they announced season seven. And I think at that point, it's really like, I don't know. I think it's not as a meme anymore. Like you, you see season one, and you can even see the difference in animation. Well, I mean, if you look even now, like if if you look at what current episode that's running, like a new one, uh, the animations changed again. Like, uh, I don't know what they changed about it, but it just looks off to me. You know what I mean? Like, maybe someone yeah. else likes that animation. But to me, I can tell it's different. Like, if you put, like, episodes in front of me, I, I think I could tell you, like, around which season it was in. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. I I think they should, like, wrap it up. But then, like, I don't know. Like, like I guess, like, still put out games and stuff if they wanted to. But, yeah, I think it should come to a close. But I wonder how they would end it. That, that, that's just what I was thinking. I was like, it'd have to be something, like, crazy. Or, like, I don't know, like... Does he just keep working at the Cryer Patty? Mm-hmm. Or does he finally, like, start his own cry? Like, does he get his own chain? The very, very first scene, like, the first time we see SpongeBob, he work, he goes into his, uh, like, workout room. Yeah. And he lifts those uh, <laughs> those doll, the, yeah. the rabbits, the stuffed animals. Yeah. yeah it, <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. Like, that's where it all started. He was just yeah. pumping iron. And then there's that episode where Sandy comes in to, like, help him work out. And he buys the fucking inflatable arms. Oh, dude. Classic, uh, dude. Are you a jerk? <laughs> <laughs> or or just, like, the, the, uh, the Weenie Hut Jr. episode. So, yeah. I mean, that one was okay, but that one was weird, too. Was well, that you one didn't one? like that one? There was that one where people kept kidnapping him to take him to their restaurant and cook for him? No, 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 no. no. This is the one where, like... He, he oh, yeah, 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 where they visited that place. They, they were like, they were trying to get into the Salty Spittoon. Yeah, he's like, he's like yes. how tough are you? And he's like, I eat nails for breakfast without milk. It's like, oh, shoot. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then like, they see SpongeBob and they send him to like, the Salty they, uh, they kick him over to Wheaton Hut Jr. And then Patrick, he's like, you beat that guy up without even touching him. <laughs> like, <laughs> Patrick like beats the shit out of himself somehow. Yeah. It's like, please, have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, me and my brother talk about how like Patrick will be like this, like this, like he'd be like a good friend some episodes, and then he'll just be like a scumbag in other episodes, you know? Yeah, like the one where his parents came over. Well, like, like the yeah, okay, go ahead. The ones where his parents came over, and SpongeBob was gonna pretend to be stupid to make him look smarter. Yeah. And then he just like was like, "Yeah, you're stupid now." <laughs> well, no, like, I, I, the one that comes to mind for me is the one where like, like they, I think they get lost, and then like they have two chocolate bars. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he eats his. He's like, "Hey, that's my chocolate bar." It's like, dude, what yeah. the fuck? And I was like, I, I remember like being a kid, being like, "Yo, yo, fuck Bastard. Patrick," you know? Yeah. I think um, I'll eat it now. Yeah. And then he like bites his own hand. He's like, you stole my chocolate bar. Yeah. That's the one where they steal the balloon and it pops. Yeah, yeah, and then they on have, free okay. balloon day. And then they go on a run. They go, they uh, run from the police. Yeah. He's like, we don't have to shave. I'm way ahead of you, buddy. And then like, he holds up his leg and it's all hairy. <laughs> Man, oh, man good you know, time. And, it, and then they pretty much started the whole like cartoon where like they'll zoom in in a, an incredible like detailed picture of something. Yeah. yeah. And you know who took that torch and ran with it is uh, Yo, Flapjack. Flapjack. Young yes. Kid. They just took that and ran. Like, where it zooms in, he goes, oh! Yeah. <laughs> cracks me up every fucking time. The voice for the Flying Dutchman is the voice for uh, Captain Knuckles. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Same act- I guess I never made that connection, but now... Same I- voice actor. Yeah, mm-hmm. I could hear that. Or, like, uh, the voice for Mr. Krabs. Have you ever seen the Highlander movies? No. Well, in the Highlander movies, it's, like, this guy that it, he represents, like, everything that is evil, and he murders people in, like, the most gruesome way in the movies. Ooh. He's the voice of Mr. Krabs. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow. That nice. actor, like, he is, it's a live-action movie. He was an actor in that, and he was wearing, like, this crazy, like, leather jacket with chains on it. He was, he was like, literally chopping people's heads off in the movie. Mm-hmm. Now he's the voice of Mr. Krabs. 
So that's a feel good story. Hell yeah, dude, chopping off heads. Do you remember some of the uh, guest stars that were in this? Like the jackass guys were in it. Wait, in SpongeBob? Yeah. You remember that episode? No, I, I mean, maybe I saw it, but I never made the, like, the connection. Jackass I'm sure you've SpongeBob? seen it. The jackass guys were in SpongeBob. Johnny Depp was in it. Um, Davy Jones was in it. Yeah, but I, the, the jackass one's off the top of my head. I remember that episode. They were like riding motorcycles and stuff and doing jumps and stuff. You looking it up? Yeah. Oh, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing about this one, yeah, Johnny Krill. His yeah, that was Johnny, Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is like later on, right? Way later on? Not way. Yeah, I mean, it's it was... probably like, F- I don't even know what season, but I'm guessing it's pretty late season. Yeah, this is one of the episodes where I saw like once or twice, you know? Um, so I, I like, like, yeah, I wouldn't really remember this one as much. Yeah, it's not as iconic as like the season one episodes for sure. Like the boating school episodes. Mm-hmm. They're just, are the nematodes? <laughs> The yeah. dying nematodes and then they, <laughs> they learn, like they eat his house and then that, that one was like so crazy or like the uh the the alaskan bullworm one yeah yeah they just had these great. like crazy like i don't know like, like they they made these like weird topics into, into like just entertaining episodes mm-hmm. um, and they're just like let's take bikini bottom <laughs> and push it someplace else <laughs> and at the end they're just all pushing it dude oh my god yeah and then right. um an episode that always comes to mind to me is the one where, I think I met- mentioned this in the last one, but like when you meet Plankton's family and they're all just like these like yeah. hillbillies. Yes, that one's. I don't great. know why I love that episode so much. There's a meme of, on that one. The guy's like, "This is Billy Bob, Joe, Bob, Joey, Jim," <laughs> and then um, when Plankton screams, he goes, "Stop it!" And then it just goes really loud, and then his eye glows red, and that's the whole meme. But it's on all like those meme compilation videos. Yeah. For some reason, people think that loud means funny. What do you mean? Like, like uh, a lot of memes or like TikTok videos, it's just someone screaming. And you're like, oh, yeah, I know what you mean. I know loud. what you mean. That's not funny. Yeah, I, gotta, I hate that. I hate that shit. Mm-hmm. I think every episode with Plankton is a good one. Plankton yeah, is I, great I really character. like Plankton. Like, because he uh, switches places with Mr. Krabs. Yeah. And then they're shoot, he's shooting the, it's funny about shooting the, uh, the cannon at him with the clothing. Oh, and he puts yeah. yeah. On it. He's like naked as the crabs, just running around. Yeah, that one. It puts a bra on him. That one's just so funny. I, I uh, put this picture in the doc. Like it's it's supposed to be like every single SpongeBob character of all time. Oh wow! Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy looking. It's um. My leg. <laughs> my <laughs> leg. I wonder where that guy is. He's on like the bottom right. Wow. Yeah. There's a lot of people in that show. There's the dirty bubble. <laughs> Hell yeah. What was that? What was that team of bad guys called? They were called um. Oh, it was something silly. I forget. It was like lemons or something like that, wasn't it? I forgot. Like the League of Evil or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or the uh, the Mermaid Man episode. Or the yeah the uh, Man Dude. Ray. Yeah, I was gonna say any like episode that involves like um like the superheroes was amazing. Was so good. When he get he gets Mermaid Man. He gets Mermaid Man belt. Mermaid Man's belt, and they have to set it to Wumbo. That's on Wumbo. Set to M for Mini. You should have said it to W for Wumbo. <laughs> I Wumbo, you Wumbo, he, she, it Wumbo. Wumbo wing. <laughs> Wumboology. Oh, oh my man. God. It's funny because, like, I saw this video on World Star Hip Hop. This guy's wearing, like, a, it's like the front of a of a Volkswagen car. You know? <laughs> what? Yeah, but it's, like it's on this guy's belt. Yeah, it's like the VW. Um, and it's and it like this, like, black dude's like, this man got the Wumbo belt on. <laughs> dude, I was like, this guy watches SpongeBob. That's how you know it's a good show, dude. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, I hope they bring it to an end in a good way. I, I think it is far run its course at this yeah. point. I wonder how they would end it. Like, how would you end it? I think I would just, like you said, bring it into the Krusty Krab, and he's just like grilling burgers, and then it just zooms out, and you just know that it goes on in, into eternity. He's just working at the Krusty Krab, doing what he loves. Yeah, I wonder if it would be like, um, just a Nickelodeon special or like a like a theatrical release. You know what I mean? That's kind of what I'm thinking at. Um, like I, it, it depends how much manpower would be, would be put in it. I I don't think they are gonna end it just because it's such a cash cow right now. I mean, because just like it's still relevant. It's in too high demand right now, especially for Nickelodeon. Because if you think about Nickelodeon, what else do they have out right now? I couldn't I even can't tell think you of anything. Yeah, I couldn't even tell you what's on. 
Um, because I have younger siblings and they don't watch Nickelodeon because they say the other shows suck. Um, compared to like Cartoon Network or Disney, but um, well, it, on Nickelodeon you had in the in the early two thousands you had bangers, dude. You had like uh, Rocket Power, you had SpongeBob, um, you had Wild Thornberries, mm-hmm. you had um, what's the other fucking one I'm thinking of that I just spaced out? Rocko's Modern Life was on there. Rugrats. There was a like a big one that I was thinking of that I just fucking forgot. Cat Dog. No, Cat no, no. Dog. Was, was that Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network? I think it was Nickelodeon. So that's what I was thinking. Just want to be sure. I could be wrong. Oh, uh, uh, fucking Hey Arnold, boy. Yes, that's exact. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yes, Hey Arnold was on there. Fairly Odd Parents. Yeah. Well, I didn't like that one as much, but it was a decent show. But it, but I, it was still like people loved it. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. was like Spider Man. Oh, oh, fucking uh, oh, what's the the smart kid? Hey, uh, no, ah, uh, fuck, Jimmy Neutron. Yeah. Well, Neutron was on there. that wasn't a cartoon though. It was like an animated kind of thing. But it didn't. It didn't hold the same spot in my heart as like cartoons, That's like, like hand drawn. Yeah, There's some about. I have this backpack right here with like all of like the '90s like uh, Nickelodeon cartoons. Nice. Well, not most of them actually aren't '90s. It started in like '99, SpongeBob, and then it was actually popular in the 2000s. But... Oh, there was that one show, um, the Monster Show. What was it called? Ah, uh, Real Monsters. Yeah, uh, Real. I never really saw that one, but I. It I didn't remember. air very long. Yeah, it's very uh, strange looking. I'd like to see them end a season and then do a movie, and then that'd be it. Yeah. Like, have a movie as they send off. Like the last episode, but it's like a movie length last episode? Mm-hmm. Yeah, something like that. And then also release it as a movie or something. Or I don't even know. Well, I mean, that, that's what I mean. Like, releasing a theater, but it's technically like a movie. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That'd be awesome. I'd go see it. Oh, yeah, for sure. I would 100% go see it. And I don't even like to go see movies at the theater. Nickelodeon went to this like, strange like change where they went from cartoons to live action. Like iCarly and shit. iCarly, Drake, and Josh. Mm-hmm. And like... Um, Zach and Cody, or is that Disney? That's Disney. But yeah, um, but thing. then now, like, what my, what my siblings are telling me, that there's, like, they're, like, they're like mostly li- live action now. But they're all like these like gimmicky shows, you know what I mean? And they're sitcoms with like the laugh track and stuff. Yeah, but it's like really bad. Because like, Disney does it. And, like, to an adult, it's bad. You know, but I because we're adults. But, like, my siblings like it. But, they, like, the ones on Nickelodeon just are not good. You know what I mean? Like, there's mm-hmm. nothing about it is good. You, you, you can tell adults made it. And they're like, oh, we're going to say poop here. And the kids are going to laugh, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, just, it's just weird. Like, if, like, literally, like, watch, like, an episode of any current Nickelodeon live action show. It's just strange. It is so weird. Conspiracy to make all the shows shit. I think we're about out of steam on this one, man. What do you think? Yep, I mean that that should be it. We should we uh wrapped it up pretty nice. Started yeah. off with drugs and ended off with SpongeBob. So uh, that's the title of my memoir when I die. Yeah, drugs and SpongeBob. Drugs and SpongeBob, baby. A memoir. Well, go, everybody, go and watch SpongeBob today. Yeah. It's 20th anniversary. Go go watch season one. Watch an episode out of season one and tell me you don't smile and have warm fuzzy feelings. Just go go on your couch, pull up your phone, call your boss, tell him you're taking a sick day. There you um, go. Download Amazon Prime. They got season one through three. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And uh, I think it might be might be four. It's at least one through three. We'll tell your friends, tell your fam, like, share, sub. Let us know what you think down below, and keep coming back for your weekly trip to purgatory. <laughs>